Can we sing it louder than that? Oh, Jesus. Come on, church. 
search, searched all over, searched all over, couldn't find nobody.
This is where we dance, right? I look across the room and I see a lot of young people, but I haven't seen a lot of young people. I see a lot of young people, but I have not seen a lot of young people. Can I see a lot of young people? Can I see a lot of young people? Can I see?
working in miracles. I live. I know. Walking in miracles. I live a life of faith. I live a life of grace. I live a life of provision. I live a life of restoration. I live a life of promotion. I live from glory to glory. From glory to glory. From faith to faith. I live a life of favor. Favor is my name. 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 Favor is
Everyone, even over there. Talk it, talk it. More, One more time, one more time, one more time. Talk it, talk it. One more. More than more. The more.
Check the age group in the room.
to God and so tonight when you see impact night it is such a night where he says that I have seen God I've encountered God I've experienced God and God has deposited something in us and we want to share it with everyone amen so can we can we thank God for such a generous heart amen and everyone that you see here tonight volunteering we are interdenominational we are not from one um, only church, we are from different churches being represented here to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, what Impact Night is about, for those of you that don't know, it is an impartation service to receive the Spirit of God that causes us to be enabled. Our pastor, Apostle Ronnie, always says that if you were a typewriter, writer, you'll type faster. Whatever that you do when you have the impartation, you do it better than you did it before. Amen? And then it's also a session for deliverance. If there's been any demonic oppression on your life or that of your family, you are in the right place tonight. Amen? For those of you that have sick families or might even be sick yourself you are in the right place because jehovah rafa is here amen and then god has given prophet an undeniable special gift to prophesy and i've seen this numerous times and if you are here tonight and you're saying i don't understand what's happening in my life I need God to speak a word into my life. This day was made for you. Amen. Can we give God a round of applause? Amen. So my sister, um, Dr. Anna, is here with us tonight. And then can I please have Pamelo? Can I have Tino? Can I have Rafilwe please to join us on stage? Thank you. Um, so let me start. Testimonies. Amen. Testimony is the time of the night where we get to celebrate what God has done for others. Because when we celebrate what God has done in the life of other people, it can come closer to you. Amen. Amen. So tonight's testimony, um, I'm going to give it in short. But our sister, she has a heart for people and she came to prophet once. And she said, prophet, this lady is going through very a lot of troubles and um, I think the only solution for her is to find a job. The lady was even having suicidal thoughts and Ausana brought her to Prophet and Prophet prayed for the lady. But beyond that, 
When Osana was there, Prophet just shifted his attention and said, but you, what do you want from God? And there and then she was talking about a job. Can I tell you, the lady that came that day for prayers, not only did she get a job, but Osana was given several options to choose from for a job. Amen. Amen. Do you want to say something? Amen. Can we give God a round of applause? Amen. Guys, there's, there's some people in this house, people have promised you jobs or until today there's nothing. And look what God was able to do. She didn't even come for herself, but she came to bring someone else. And God just opened up a door for her. And so today she's working at the University of the Free State. Amen. About to be Dr. Anna. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Then, um, this is my neighbor. We have moved now, but she's still my neighbor. Amen. She's a pharmacist by profession. And um, for some time, she was struggling to register at the pharma, pharmaceutical council. Do you want to share it quickly for a few? Okay. Um, she, um, it took about two years, right? More than two years. It was more than two years. And then one day, we had impact night in Pretoria, similar to what we are having here tonight. And there was an awesome presence of God. Amen. When she came back, we still continued with prayers. And she came one Friday on prayers. And the tears were streaming down her face. She said, I don't know how. I don't know. I've contacted every person that I've known. But God just opened up the door and they send her the message that you can now come and write. Amen. Amen. Okay. Maybe some of you have not struggled to register with Sakwa. But for those of you, that is just right there. That shall be your testimony. Amen. I struggled, but God came through for me. Amen. And a wonderful testimony as she goes off is... She and her husband, both of them are pharmacists, and God came through for them. Amen. They opened up their own pharmacy this year. Can we give God the glory? Amen. Okay. Amen. Uh, I'd like to greet everyone with the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, my name is Kim Po. I'm from Bread. I'm a student at Mohawk University. Amen. Let me get for a testimony, a living testimony. I will hold over my name. Amen. I've struggled to register my university. I came, I think, last week. Yeah, because I struggled, and the time when I struggled to register is the time my mom lost her job. Amen. So there was no income, no nothing. But that's what I paid. I paid. Amen. I'm both sorry. My child, we are going to the university, and. By the faith I have in my God, you are going to make it. And I was like, yo, I've been waiting. <laughs> but I have that little faith, that little. I won't lie. I had that little. I was already, when I, I wanted to give up already. See, look at the time. It's Good Friday. They are above school. But God made miracles. Uh, by the time my mom didn't have a job, I guess natural to go to university. I had no money, but how much more will I be able to hold? Amen. How can I go high? I got proof of registration. Same day, guy, I go next Sunday. My mom just one. I went to Hague and Mozore. I got the proof of register. I'm going to school. Are I don't have man, but you will go. How can I get a man? Get a go get na. Then I called her Gambosa. And I didn't even have transport. But my uncle decided, I don't know, I'm going to take you. Amen. That's one of the things. Then he came and said, I go to the school. I love to thank God. I miracle to thank God. And I get to the school. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. What God cannot do does not exist. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So um, there's many more testimonies, and I'm sure as you um, are going to watch just on your Facebook right now, if you are at home watching, or if you are here, just share, go to your Facebook quickly, or on YouTube, for those of you that are not on Facebook, can you kindly um, take out your phones quickly, for those of you that are here, just go on Facebook one second and type in Shama Chenaka. We want everyone to be blessed, even those ones that are not here in the service, amen. So the only thing that you're going to do right now, you're going to go on Facebook, type in Shama Chenaka, and just click the button, share, amen. Are we going to do that? Are we going to do that? Or you are already busy and I'm distracting you? <laughs> amen, amen. So as you are doing that, I'm going to head into the offering for tonight. Amen. So tonight is weapons of war. And if I can tell you what the team has experienced in preparation for this conference, this impact night, truly it was war. It was war. It was war. It was war. So tonight, I just want to tell you about a man, his name was Abraham. Amen. If that is your name tonight, you are blessed. Amen. This Abraham went to war for his cousin named Lot. Now Lot was captured because Lot had chosen the best place to him at the time, which was Sodom and Gomorrah to go and live in. And then there were some enemies that came and raided the place and they captured Lot. They captured everything they had. They captured their wives. They captured their children. This was war. Amen. If you want to find the scripture, you will find the scripture reading in Genesis 14. Now this Abram, after he had gone to war and he had taken back Lot from the enemy, the other kings that was with him, wanted to say that, no, Lot, no, Abram, you take the glory. And Abram said, no, I refuse to take the glory because all the glory belongs unto God. Amen. And then he gave what we always use. He gave a tithe unto Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek was a foreshadow of Jesus Christ, the high priest. Amen. So if you are here tonight and you are wondering, but... Did I really come into this place to give? No, we are not asking you to give necessarily. We are asking you to go to war with your seed. We are saying that whatever that I have, even my money, it must speak for me in the place of when the enemy comes against me like a flood, this seed must raise up a standard for me. Amen? When you give tonight, some of us, have family members that are in the grips of the devil's hand and we want them to be saved. You are going to war just like Lot, just like Abram went to war for Lot. You are going to war with your seed. So I'm not going to drag this out any longer. We're going to stand up on our feet and we're going to take an offering. Amen? We're going to take an offering which is our worship unto God. Amen? Can we stand up on our feet? So it is not about the amount at all. So if you are looking at your neighbor to say, mm, how much are you giving? How much are you giving? No, you have already missed it because there's no reward in trying to compete. Amen. Tonight, when you give to God, give what you have. There was a woman in the Bible. She had two mites. Yeah? But what amazes me is that when she came to the basket, to throw her money in. Jesus was standing by the basket and he said that out of all the people, this woman gave the most. Why? Because she gave her all. Amen. She didn't look at these are so small to give. So do not make your seat small tonight. Trust God and believe God that that individual that you want to be healed, that individual that you want to be saved, you know, your family, there's some patterns in some of our family. It just keeps on repeating itself over and over and over again. Tonight, as you are giving, you are saying, God, 
I'm going to war tonight with that spirit that keeps on repeating itself in our family, where none of us can get married, where even when we get married, we end up getting divorced, where it seems like at the age of 50, no one can pass the age of 50 without them leaving the earth. Amen? So this is what you are sowing into tonight. So we're going to close our eyes, and I'm going to speak a blessing over you. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord God, as we are presenting our worship before you tonight, Lord God. We are not giving, Lord Jesus, Father God, out of, Lord Jesus, Father, being asked to do so. We are giving, Lord Jesus, with, Lord God, and understanding, Lord God, that when we give, Lord Jesus, Father God, that, Lord Jesus, Jesus, you will open up the windows of heaven, that you will pour out a blessing that, Lord Jesus, we will not be able to contain. And Father, it does not just pertain unto finances, Lord God. You will perfect everything concerning us. Our health, Lord Jesus, Father God. Our family situation, Lord Jesus. Father, you will even revive, Lord Jesus, Father God, ministries, Lord God, through the seed, Lord God. You will bless, Lord Jesus, Father God, those who are studying with understanding, Lord God, and comprehension, Lord God, beyond their age, Lord Jesus, Father God. Lord, we thank you that those that are working, Lord God, Father, their work, Lord Jesus, Father God, will be seen as excellent, Lord Jesus. There will be favor upon them, Lord God. The marriages in this house, Lord God, right now represented, Lord God. You are blessed, Lord Jesus, Father God. You will shield it, Lord God. And every person in this place, when the enemy comes in like a flood, let your spirit raise up a stand against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's going to be offering baskets that will be coming down the aisles. You may just drop your seat in faith. Amen. And I'm going to give over to once more in the team to bless us in worship. Amen. you let your living waters flow from my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of Jesus.
every voice lifted up. Jesus. Every hand lifted up.
worship you and walk. Can we sing it one more time? My voice lift it up. Oh, glorious God. Oh, we praise your name. We praise your name. But lift your hands and lift your voice to the King of Glory. I don't want you to clap, I want you to pray. Lift your hands, lift your voice to the King of Glory. Begin to blast in the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Somebody pray, somebody pray. Shikanda pros katabandekish. Leko soko paranta kababa shata. Lift your voice and pray wherever you are. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about the person next to you. You are here to encounter God. Lift your voice and pray. Kando shatalabaka. Rekeba mundo ko shatalabaka. Rikamanda rababa bashete. Rekeba mundo shakaba. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Kinda shakombra dosh kada baka. Leko skobranta kavalia makapash. Young people pray. Young people pray. Ela mo shada na bakata. I can't hear you praying. I want you to pray. Lift your voice and pray. You are here to encounter God, not a man. Young people pray. For in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. It's only a generation that can pray, that can encounter that. Lift your voice and pray wherever you are. I can't hear you. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your Give God a round of applause. So wherever you are for the next two minutes, 
I want us to go crazy for Jesus. Can we do that? Is that okay? Is that okay, young people? So if I count to three, I want you to shout on top, 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 top of your voice. Even if it means you need to carry the chair, carry it. And give God a shout of praise wherever you are. One, two, three, somebody shout! Yes! Shout praise! Wait, we are not shouting for a man. We are not shouting for a president. We are not shouting for a celebrity. We are shouting for the one who is and who is to come. We are shouting for the king of glory, the way maker. So you can do better than that. Somebody shout! I can't hear you. Up there, up there, shout! Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus! Tell them that tonight is your night and you are in for a treat. Five people. Thank you, worship team. When you're done, kindly take your seat. And cross your leg and shout, I'm in charge. Tonight is a wonderful night. We're here to experience God like never before. And I believe that your life will never be the same. And tonight with us, we've got great men and women of God that has come from all over the place. And I just want to acknowledge them tonight. Amen. The Bible says, give honor where honor is what? Is due. Amen. So I see great men and women that are here. I see Prophet Eskinello is here. Let's give her a hand of a praise. Amen. I love her so much and she knows that. I appreciate you, man. Amen. Awesome. There's a lot of pastors that are here. Apostle Monatisa is here. Let's give him a hand as well. God bless you, sir. Amen. Pastor Rivona is here. God bless you. Amen. Wow. Tell your neighbor, Wow. Because that's the theme of tonight. Wow. For our weapons of war. Weapons of war. Wow. If your neighbor is not responding, find another one and say, wow. <laughs> say to three people, wow. And with me tonight as well, I've got Apostle Hazelnut from all the way from Dubai. He's a good friend of mine. I know we've got international visitors, people that came from U.S., People that came from Botswana, Zimbabwe, they are here. Let's give them a hand of a praise. Amen. Do you know what it is for a young person like me to be followed by such people that has got so much reverence, that came from all over the world. Amen. Just to experience God tonight. Let's give them a hand of praise. Amen. God bless you guys. Awesome. Amen. He's a great man of God. He just said, Prophet, I'm, I'm just flying in to experience what you guys are doing. Amen. And we're people from U.S. and we've been with them a couple of days from now. They've been saying, no, what, we are coming. They paid their own tickets, own hotels, just to experience God tonight. And they've been doing it with every impact night. Every impact. People coming from Australia, New Zealand, just to experience God. Because the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, the next move shall be riding on prayer, word, and worship. Yeah. That is exactly what will usher the next revival. 
So if you're wise and wise men and women of God, you need to tap into that intercession, have the prayer. Are you hearing me? Have the platform of worship and deep insight of the word. That is what is changing lives. Amen. And I believe that tonight you are in for a treat. We're going to still worship. Amen. We'll worship until your, 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 your clothes are, are, are wet. Yeah. Most impact night people go home carried. It's like that. And you can experience it tonight as well for the glory of God. Amen. Are we together? Awesome. With me also, I've got my beautiful wife. I think she's been here doing most of the stuff. <laughs> you know, you know, they say behind every successful black man, there's the police. <laughs> no, there's a praying what? Woman. Amen. So I thank God for my wife. Let's give her a hand. Amen. I don't know where she is, but somewhere here. Yeah. yeah. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Amen. I want to introduce three books that I've written. Amen. Awesome books. Hearing God for yourself. Because these days, it's do it your what? Yourself. Gone are the days. You come to the house of God and say, man of God, pray for me. What about you? When are you going to grow to pray for yourself? Hearing God for your what? For yourself. And deliverance for yourself and others. Hearing God for yourself and others and healing for yourself and others. And I want to recommend this book. It's very... Oh my God. Don't worry. It means that my angels are here. I want to recommend this book for you. Very powerful book, Healing for Yourself. How many have read this book? Or you haven't read it? You haven't read it? How many haven't read it? You haven't seen it before? Lift your hand now. Really, come, my dear. Come, you in brown. Come. Come, let me bless you. In black, come. Yes. Yeah. Let me bless you. God bless you. Eh? Break your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 4. Are you ready? Just give me 15 minutes, then we're going to worship God in this place. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 4, it reads as follows. For our weapons of war, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in pulling down of strongholds. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here tonight to pull down strongholds. You got to understand that for one to fulfill destiny, for one to fulfill destiny that God has called them for, they need to understand that they have to pull down certain strongholds. Because you got to understand that the devil will never give your destiny on a silver platter. You got to fight for what belongs to you. That's why the Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Therefore, the violent men in brackets shall take it by force. So you're going to take what belongs to you by force. Are you hearing me, somebody? And I believe that after tonight, every stronghold operating in your life, it shall be brought law in the name of Jesus. I can't hear your amen. I don't like your amen. I say every stronghold that followed you in this place shall not follow you back home in the name of Jesus. So you got to understand what is a stronghold. A stronghold is a defensive structure. That's why the children of Israel could not penetrate Jericho because it was, it was having a stronghold, a fortress. So they could not fight because they understood that whenever there's high walls, protection, defensive, that's what we call strongholds. So you got to understand that strongholds can be physical. And strongholds can be spiritual. Tell your neighbor, follow. Hey, tell the other one, follow. Strongholds can be physical. And strongholds can be what? Spiritual. And you got to have an understanding. That that's why sometimes you can do everything you can do in your life. But still things are not moving and change. Some of you are here, you've called your uncle, help me. <laughs> <laughs> they are even ignoring your WhatsApp messages. They blue tick you. Because <laughs> they know that every time there's a message from you, it's always a money issue. So they ignore you. And it has become repetitive in your life. That's a strong word and it must be brought low. Because you are not born to beg or to borrow. Are ah, you not hearing me? 
So strong words has to be what? Brought law. So a lot of people are living such a life where they've tried everything that they've can. And it still, it still feels like nothing is changing. Nothing is moving. And there's nothing that's so painful in life because life is, is in seasons and is in, is in phases as well. And there's nothing that is so painful when you know that you're actually ready for a breakthrough and nothing is happening in your life. Are you hearing me? It's a very frustrating place to be at. That's why most of you are frustrated where you are. You don't like the car that you drive. You don't like the place that you stay. Because your spirit is telling you that you deserve better. Yet there's a stronghold that is surrounding what belongs to you that needs to be brought low. For our weapons of warfare, they are not what? Flesh. Some of you have been fighting. Hey, my, my uncle doesn't talk to my mother. My mother doesn't talk to my little sister. You've been trying to, to, to fix family feuds. No, no, no. Our weapons of warfare, they're not what? Canal. There are certain things that doesn't need. Somebody say strongholds. Say it again, say strongholds. So there are three types of strongholds. Quickly, please write this down and then we're going to pray. Number one, there's what we call mental or emotional strongholds. Where one begins to have self-inferiority, self-pity, self-hate. You know, you can be married and still be lonely. You know that, right? You can have a partner and still be lonely. Because loneliness is a stronghold. Sense of emptiness. You can't say thank you. You always have that mentality of, uh, uh, you, you didn't do much. As if it's, 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 it's credited to you. Self-pity. You know, there are people that hate themselves. Like they just hate themselves. They don't like the way they look. That's why they go and adjust. They are not, the Bible says, contentment is great gain. They are not content. Emotional stronghold. There are people that struggle with unforgiveness, bitterness, envy, jealous. It's an emotional, it's things that is always inside. Like I, I prayed for one lady and she came to me and said, Man of God, you know what? I, I can't. I'm tired. I'm saying, What are you tired of? He said, You know, I wish you knew what my husband did to me. I said, Where's your husband? He said, He died 38 years ago. She was too angry with the man who has died 38 years ago. Stronghold. Emotional stronghold. There are people that sometimes at night they're just crying. They don't even know why they're crying. Or they have that sense of, hey, I, I wish I'm dead. I wish I, was, I, I would just die. One person came to me and said, man of God, I want to take my life. I said, come sit down. Let me tell you my own story. I said, where you are, do you have electricity? I said, yes. Do you bath warm water? I said, yes. Do you have shelter, blankets, and food? I said, yes. I said, I actually grew up with those, without those things. Yet there you are. You are so comfortable. But something is ministering to you to tell you that, no, 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 no. You need to take your life. It's not worth living for. It's a stronghold. Because there are those who, who don't even have what you have. 0,01% of what you have, the kind of life that you live, even the food that you eat. Yet you are still not grateful to God. It's a stronghold. Somebody says stronghold. Number two, quickly. There's what we call environmental stronghold. So you become a reflection of your environment. That's why Jesus said to a man in Mark chapter number 8, verse number 25. He said to the man that he prayed for, who was blind, go home, but don't go to the city. Woman of God, there's something that is striking here. Jesus said, go home, but don't go away to the city. Yet home is where the city is. You're not following me. It's like I tell you, go home. In Medunza Street, but don't go to Promosa. 
Yet Medunza is in Promosa. How? Basically what Jesus was saying, don't go back to the very same things in your environment, family and bloodline strongholds. There are families where people rise and fall. Some families, they don't finish degrees. I prayed for one young man here. I prayed seven years, he's trying to finish one degree. I said, even if you're a dunderhead, seven years, Charlie. The course that he's doing is no calculation. He said, man of God, I don't understand. The moment I just get to the exam, I start to feel zoom, zoom. I said with him, I said, you know what? There's something that I want to teach you that is called spiritual mapping. Where you begin to look of where you come from. Because sometimes for you to know the future and where you are, you have to go back to the past. And start to, be, and start to ask questions. He came back and said, it's true. Do you know that man of God, I'm the first person in my family, my mother said my father, to be at the university. I said, now you know. It's a stronghold. That is to be what? down. Your father grade 8, your mother grade 10, your uncle grade 7, all of them. It's a stronghold. Because there will always be something from your family, from the bloodline, that pulls you back. If you, if you don't want to become it, it follows you because it follows you through the blood. That's why if we want to know who you are, we check your blood. Because the life of a human being is in the blood. Family, stronghold. I remember the first time I got an opportunity to go overseas. Oh, my mother threw a party, farewell party. We were so happy. We ate. They congratulated me. My passport went missing. I had it in the bag. Went missing that day. We looked everywhere, under the sofa, in the toilet. Somebody was putting his head there. Maybe it fell when you went to the loo. <laughs> in the bin, everywhere. We couldn't find the passport. Three hours before the flight, we got the passport at the window of the car outside. It was there by the wiper. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Check-in is two hours. Hurry, hurry. We still have time. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Fine. We got into the car. Just 10 k's away from home, the car had a flat tire. Somebody said stronghold. Now we are trying to fix the tire. All of a sudden, the car doesn't want to start. So I said, guys, you don't have to do fair anymore. It's, let me hike. I'm late. Let me hike. So I hiked. Just imagine going to the airport, you are hiking. Stronghold. I got there to the airport. And then I gave them my passport. The person looked at me and he looked at my passport. He looked at me, he looked at my passport. He said, but this name of yours, Shama, ha, you sound like a suicide bomber. This name is, this name, uh -uh, uh -uh. where are you from? Where are you going? Who's your father? Who's your, uh -uh. I say, my flight is about to take off, sir. Say, no, we need to search you. Come, come into the room. Take off your clothes. I did that. While we were talking, the flight left. Stronghold. I came back home crying. I sat down with my mother. Then she said, uh -huh. I thought this would happen. I said, why do you say so? I said, who else in your family has ever gone overseas? <laughs> Stronghold. So I realized that this is something that has to be broken over my life. I don't approach Kavalia Bahazodai. The stronghold had to what? Had to break. So I enter into the place of prayer. Three days fasting, dry. I said, Lord, how can we have a family where nobody knows even where Lusutu is? Just here. Yeah, it's just three hours from here. The stronghold had to be what? Broken. The day it was broken, guess what? Everyone in my family started traveling. Because the stronghold was broken. 
family what? Stronghold. In as much as David was anointed, he was, oh, God loved him so much. He wrote so much things in the book of Psalms. But there was a stronghold in his family that he struggled to address. Let me come down and help you. Something strange happened. Somebody says stronghold. Something strange happened. Are you hearing me up there? Can I get a big amen? Yeah. Something happened very strange in the life of David. In as much as he was an anointed man, he was a king, a priest, and a prophet. He was the only one in the Old Testament who operated in that three dimension. But he struggled with the spirit of lust. And you got to understand that this spirit of lust that was upon David, it was coming from his father. You got to understand that when he was anointed to be king, his father said, the, the prophet had to ask Samuel, is, there, is this all your sons? He said, no, but we've got another one. He's, he's not important. He's there keeping the... You know why he was there and he was not on the table with the other seven sons? Because he was not sharing the same mother with the other sons. So that thing followed him even in his kinghood even in his priesthood it followed him. that's why it doesn't matter whether you're a man of god if you don't understand the school of the spirit and the dynamics of stronghold it will follow you you will preach but you'll be broke you will speak with heavy tongues but empty am i helping somebody here it followed him we know what happened with uri i'm not going to go into that story but the same pattern, he did not break it. It jumped to his son, Absalom. Absalom, he slept with his father's wives. It jumped to his son, Amnon. He raped his sister, Tamar. What you do not break now, it will break your children. It will break your generation. What you do not fight now, it will fight you in the future. Listen, weapons of war is for your seed, not just for you. I will not even talk about Solomon. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 nyatis. I don't know how did he do it. Because just one woman is trouble. So I'm thinking seven, hundred. I'm sure he was calling them with code. Ne? Because you can't remember all the names of 700 people. <laughs> What number are you? <laughs> zero, zero, 001. <laughs> it was a stronghold. And the Bible says that God spoke to Solomon that I have to split your father's kingdom because of that stronghold. He ended up worshipping foreign gods because of stronghold. Are you hearing me, somebody? So you got to understand that there are weapons of war that we must invoke. Number one, we have to invoke for strongholds to be broken. We have to invoke we, a, number one weapon, a weapon of consecration. There are two dimensions to consecration. The consecration of the flesh and the consecration of the heart. If you've got to consecrate the flesh, you have to die to yourself. Any man that loveth the world, the father is not in him. You have to die to yourself. Consecration of the flesh. You have to change the music that you listen to as a young person. You have to change the kind of movies that you watch. Yeah. One day we did a test. We said, everybody stand. Give me five memory verses. Five. Not even ten. Twenty-five. <laughs> Not even two people got it right. Five. Then I said, give me all the names of soccer players you know. Ah! Give me all the music of Beyonce. If they know every letter song. You got to die to yourself. If you, want to, if you want change in your life and your family. You got to die to yourself. That's why Paul said, it's no longer I that liveth. But Christ that liveth in me. You gotta die to yourself. Somebody asked me, man of God, why are you putting this impact night on, on Wednesday? I said, because Friday and Saturday, young people, they go and fat and sit. They told me that the students won't come because they go and fat and sit on Friday. You're already acting like a wife and you're not married. You're cooking for him. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Boyfriend, 
friend of yours that if you want legs, I'll buy you KFC. Touch. Feel. Somebody say, preach. Black men preach. That's what I'm doing. If you want breast, there's Nando's. T- tell them, don't make it a quarter chicken. Make it breast. Chicken breast. And let them feel that one. For your body does not belong to you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That the spirit of the Lord dwells in the side of. You can't let just anyone be rough raising you. Like tomatoes. You are precious before God's sight. And you have to look yourself in the same eyes. Well, at least I'm here, there's somebody who's against this message. I know. They're like, why is he saying this? We came to see girls here. You gotta die to yourself. It's not fashion. Somebody said, hey, man of God, you don't know. I've got six. Yeah. It's like a table. I need legs that are supported. If this one breaks, I still have other ones. That is... You are calling it fashion to have six girlfriends. You don't even know it's a stronghold. You gotta die to yourself as a young person. Someone but like, uh, me, uh, I don't sleep around, I don't do this, but I do self-service. What's the difference between your self-service and abortion? What is the difference? Young people do this. Young people, you can hear me. I'm talking to you. Die. Tell your neighbor, die. That's why we can't have young people on fire for God. How can God use you? How can the anointing rest on you? We can't be having a church of people who come and repent every Sunday. They are crying, you think they are under Holy Spirit. Can't they are repenting? I know what you did the last summer. Die to self. Tell your neighbor, die to self. Number two, quickly, we are, we are, we are closing. You got to die to yourself. Are you hearing me? I know. There's somebody who just came here and said, hey, I need to look at, at a girl. Holy Ghost, fire! Adabomba kataba hazivia. You got to consecrate your heart. Very important. Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 20. Hatred, envy, jealous, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. Learn to celebrate others. Yeah. Learn to, learn to celebrate what? When you see someone looking good like this, tell them you look good, you smell nice. Because whatever you celebrate, you attract. Oh. Oh. Instead of saying, you look nice, they'll be like, ah, when did you do that new Esther? Yesterday. Oh, I'm actually going to go do mine next week. Who asked you? Who asked you? Consecrate your heart. Tell your neighbor, consecrate your heart. Number two, weapon of four. Are you guys with me? Let me close with this. Number two, weapon of four. First Psalm chapter number, Psalms 138 verse number 2. Psalms 138 verse number 2. You got to understand the Bible says that God has highly exalted his word above his name. So if you want to invoke a weapon of war, you need to use the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's why the problem with ministers that manifest power without teaching the word. It's like somebody who just walk here and say, these are my children, but we never saw you pregnant. Young people, let's go back to the word. Let's go back to the word. Let there be hunger and baptism for the word of God. Not just spiritual gifts, the word of God. For the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword that is able to separate between the bone and the marrow. God will not do anything unless he sends his word, unless it fulfills that which he has sent it for. Word. 
When last did you read the Bible? You just read one scripture, then you're already snoring and poofing. But when you're watching Grey's and Anatomy, you watch eight episodes. You want poo-poo, you want wee-wee, everything, nothing, you don't move. You only remember your Bible when it's changed. Where's my Bible, Kanti? Then you have to dust it. You should be ashamed of yourself. Do you know other religions, women of God, by already five years, they can recite the whole Bible. Tell your neighbor, go back to the word. Number three weapon, prayer. We're going to pray now. Are you guys ready to pray? Prayer. We got to go back to the place of seeking the face of God. David said, for as a deer panted for the water, so is my soul longs after you, God. It's only in the secret place where God begins to reveal who you are, your identity, and what he has called you for at the place of prayer. That's why it's the most difficult thing to do. The devil fights prayer. We can come here dance two hours. I'm going to bring one spot. You will see people dancing two hours. I just say, open your mouth and pray. In five minutes, it's like, upela moya. You no longer have words. But you can chat two hours on WhatsApp. Hello, how are you? How are you? Two hours. And after that, before you sleep again, hello, how are you? Two hours. But you can't talk to God like that. You know why the enemy fights prayer? It happens to me every time I want to pray. Oh my God. Wee wee comes, poo poo. My back pains. Then I know I was like, Dev, I know you. You don't want me to pray. And I'm not going to allow you to do that. Where were you we, we, before I start saying I'm going to pray? That's why the day that you tell yourself, I'm going to fast today because your prayer should be entangled with fasting. Praying with, not end, with. Because fasting is a propeller, is a catalyst to open you to a spiritual place. Are you hearing me? So the day, hey, one day I woke up and said, I'm fasting. I woke up six o'clock. It's like I've never eaten since I was born. How many happens to that? It's like you have never eaten. The day that you're saying, ah, today. It's like the whole pup you ate yesterday, it's gone. Why? Because the devil knows those are the things that can change your life as a young person. Prayer. Because if there's a man to pray, Are you guys ready to pray? Tonight, we're going to pray and invoke weapons of war so that there can be a change in your life. Are you hearing me, somebody? Let me close with my testimony. When I was at the age of 15, 16, I used to be under severe demonic attacks. That sometimes I would sleepwalk and one day my parents found me at the grave. I would hate night. I won't sleep when the lights are off. Because every time when I'm sleeping, it's either I'm, drink, I'm dreaming a snake kissing me, an ugly pig chasing me, and it will chase me, chase me, I'll run, run, run. And then I'll be stuck in the mud. And then when it's about to swallow me, then I'll wake up. <sighs> it was every day. It started affecting my academics. It brought a, a lot of self-inferiority. You know, I'm already dark, so when inferiority comes, <sighs> you can imagine the concoction. Are you learning something? We're in the school of the spirit here. Then one day on this faithful day, while I was sleeping, three people walked into the room. I couldn't see their faces, but I could see their shadows. They were wearing black things. I could see every, it's as if the house was open. I could see where my parents were sleeping. I could see where my other twins were sleeping. Because we are twins. I come from a family of twins. But I was alone in the room. And then they came, one came and hold my hands. And another one came and hold my feet. 
And the other one started unzipping my trousers, taking it out. And they said, tonight we're going to rape you and kill you. I tried to shout for help, but it's as if my voice was not coming out. How many have experienced that? I can see your hands. It's a lot of you. We call it nightmares, right? It's a stronghold. And then as this lady was trying to take off my pants, I was fighting, shaking my... They say, we are here. You can't go anywhere. You can't escape. There's no one you can call. Then I said, Jesus. And then the man that was holding my hands said, shut up. Don't mention that name. He moved his hand on my neck and he was choking me. I said, don't mention that name. I said it again. Jesus. He said, we told you, don't mention that name. I shouted it again. Jesus. They said, hey, stop it now. I shouted again. Jesus. And all of a sudden, they all ran out through the window. And I woke up. When I woke up, I was no longer on the bed. I was on the floor. Everybody came running. I was shouting, screaming. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? I was sweating. The reason why people ran is not because of the shouting and the screaming because they knew that that's what happens to me every day. But what made them to come this time is because it was not just a dream. It was actually happening. How did we know? Because the window broke that those three spirits left. The house was locked. There were dogs outside. Reza wire, jirao. So there's no way that somebody could have broken the what? The window. That's when I knew that God, something has to change in my life. I cannot go on like this every time. I cannot. So I told myself I'm going to go into fasting and what? Pray. Myself. I said I'm going to have to pray. This has to stop. This nonsense has to stop. I cannot continue life like this. Until when is this going to continue? So I invoked the weapons of what? Of war. I was praying, worshipping, reading my Bible, fasting. It was just like a joke. I was just doing it because I said, God, I'm tired. I started fasting on Thursday. Saturday evening, early hours of the morning, which was Sunday, early hours of the morning. My grandmother's sister came to the house, shaking the gate. My parents woke up. They thought maybe somebody has what? Died. They said, we need to see Shama. Where is Shama? I must ask for forgiveness. Where is he now? Me, I'm coming with my short pants. I'm wondering what is happening with this auntie. You know? It was like Muvango. She went on her knees and said, my son, can you forgive me? I'm confused. What is this Tani talking about? You have to forgive me. I said, what? He said, I'm one of the people that appeared to you in the room. Me, your father's sister, and your uncle. These are the same family. We share the same name as me, same, same name, same everything. He said, this time we came back again, but we saw you on your knees praying. And the light struck us so hard. We couldn't stand where you are. And he said, the same light went into the room of the Sangoma who gave us the powers to bewitch you. So the Sangoma sent them a message. He said, that person that you brought to me, you have caused trouble. Now my things are not working, so I'm going to kill you. So she came to ask for forgiveness so that I can pray for her so that the Sangoma does not what? I shouted, Holy Ghost! And that was the end of it. And I tell you today, I don't even dream. I'm not a prophet. I don't dream. When I'm sleeping, I hear flies, cars, mosquito. I even told God, take away the what? The dream. Because the stronghold was what? Was broken. Child of God, when you pray, things will begin to change. Are you hearing me? There's a level where you get, where you yourself, you don't have to invoke weapons of war. You become a weapon of war yourself. 
And tonight, God is about to baptize you with his spirit where you become a weapon of for yourself. Where you're going to go back to where you come from and begin to turn around things by prayer. Where things will begin to shift. Maybe where you come from, they told you that people that don't succeed, you will be the first one. And you pull others out. You will be the trap blazer. You will be the record breaker. They told you that no one can ever play a junior. You will be the first one. For it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Southern shout hallelujah. They told you that it can happen. Either. The tents that you have at your house is tents of funeral. You'll be the first one to break that record. Your wedding will be on top billing. You did not hear me. I say your wedding will be on top. It will be the talk of the town. Because God is about to make you a weapon of war. I said, God is about to make you a weapon of war. I said, God is about to make you a weapon of war. After today, maybe you have been failing. Maybe you have been failing. They even know you. They have given you a nickname. But God is about to make you a weapon of war. Even this semester, this semester, it will be cum laude, distinction, 80%, 90%. Why? Because you have become a weapon of war. Maybe you're a minister here. Things are shaking in your ministry. But God is about to make you a weapon of war. Demons in your territory shall hear that you are there. Strongholds shall be broken. I say strongholds shall be broken. It doesn't matter where you come from or who you look like. Whether they like it or not. Whether they say congratulations or not. God is about to make you a weapon of war. Will you be a cause and a reason for change in your family? You will be the Benjamin of your family. You will be the Joseph of your family. Somebody who takes others out of poverty. Somebody who takes others out of limitation. Somebody who takes others out of stagnation. Are you ready to become a weapon of war? I say, are you ready to become a weapon of war? You can't be ordinary anymore. You can't be ordinary. They've underestimated your family and your life for a long time. Things must change. I'm telling you, things must change. That strong man that has been tormenting your family, tonight is their end. We declare judgment over the works of the enemy. For our weapons of warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty. In pulling down of every stronghold. Are you hearing me? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers and rulers. And tonight we are here to tell the powers of where you come from. That enough is enough. My time has come. Hey, I say my time has come. Things must change in my life. Things must turn around. Oh my God. Oh my God. As, you are talk, as I'm talking right, begin to pray. Oh my God, begin to pray. God is making you a weapon of war. I said, God is making you a weapon of war. 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 For as men that has received him, he gave them power. Tonight you are receiving power to change things in your family. Tonight you are receiving power to shift things. Likando po shata mande berekusha. Rekoska bonta kabahash. Rekoska ba. Give me Jeremiah. Let, let's close with this. Give me Jeremiah 51 verse number 20. We're going to read it together then we'll pray. Jeremiah 51 verse number 20. Are you ready to become a weapon of war? Some of you, you will be prophets in your family. Some of you, God is going to take you nation because God is about to make you a weapon of war. Ah, destinies depend on you, child of God. There are people who are depending on your shoulders tonight that you must bail out. Are you ready to read with me? Let's go. This is what the Lord says. If I'm about to stir up destructive wind against what? Babylon. The population of Leb Pamai. Verse number two, quickly. Let's go. For 
I will send strangers to scatter Babylon and strip a land bare. Let's skip. Let's skip. Let's skip. Let's go to verse number 20 quickly. Let's skip. Babylon means a system of where you come from. Those strong ones that we've been talking about. God is saying that I'm about to plunder it out. Give me King James Version. Manda posh gadabarada bahaya. Yes, you are. Thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. For with you, I will break into pieces nations. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. Verse 21, let's go. And with you, I will break into pieces the horse and its rider. For with you, I will break into pieces the chariots and its rider. Somebody stand on your feet. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Adosh. I'm a weapon of war. You gotta enter into your father's house and take what belongs to you. You gotta enter into the camp, camp of the enemy and possess what belongs to your family. Somebody lift your voice and begin to blast in the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Lift your voice now, begin to pray. As you are praying, God is making you a weapon of war. Likando robo shaka talabaka rekoska ponta baliadosh alamos kabash the power of God is already moving somebody pray I can't hear you young people pray Lord make me a weapon of war Lord make me a weapon of war my family cannot be like this when I'm here make me a weapon of war shadash rekatete talabosha leke ponta talabaka sha eleka talabosha talabaha. Announce me, oh God. Give me favor, oh God. Establish me, oh God. Prosper me, oh God. Make me a weapon of war for your kingdom. Make me a weapon of war. Somebody pray. I can't hear you. Somebody pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Allah Shata. As we are praying, power is moving. As we are praying, your destiny is changing. Your marriage, pray for your degree, pray for your bursary, pray for your ministry. Allah da da da, Allah da 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 da, Ika da 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 bonta, Rabba ba 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 shata, Lekom braka da da bonta, Lekom braka da, Lika so braka da, I am on the to to to. Forget about the person next to you. God must make you a weapon of war tonight. God must make you a weapon of war tonight.
Help those who are falling. Help them. Help them. Ashes, help them. Help them. Lift your hands and begin to drink in. Upstairs, lift your hands and begin to drink in. The power of God is moving all over this place. Shakata, shatabosh. Holy Spirit, begin to move. Like a wind. From the front to the back. Up to the garden. Holy Spirit, begin to move. Among us, Lord, raised prophets. Raised prophets. That will not compromise the gospel. That will not dilute the oh my God. Fire is coming on somebody right now. There's a prophetic mantle that is resting. That's it. Take it. Take it. That's it. Ashes help. Take it. That's it. That's it. Makataka parada. I see a prophet up there. The power of God is coming to you where you are right there. That's it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I need ushers up there. Help. Help them. Some of you, you'll be an apostle to your generations. Nations shall hear about you. We have been waiting for Nigerians. Now it's time for us to go to Nigeria and South African. Receive that grace. Oh my God. Ashes help there. Receive that grace. You are becoming a battle X. With you, Asha, tear down kingdoms. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at your neighbor. Press deeper. Go deeper. Press deeper. Can we pray two more minutes? Let's go. Pataka Shagabaha. Rekependo Shagabaha. That's it. Yeshu. Asha's help. Asha's help. Laka Bashada. Rekebebebon Tataba. Yeshu. Your life has to change. Your ministry has to change. Shaka Shadash. Rakaba Shadash. That's it, that's it, that's it. Shaka Bash. That's it. Support you. Support you. Support you. That's it. Support you. Support you. Yeshu. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. It's yours. Shaba ba 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 shata. Yeshu. Somebody pray. Shut up, shut up. Take it, it's a body, take it, take it. 
Yeshu Look at me, look at me. You know why I called you? Can I tell you? Lift your hands. In the realm of the spirit, the Lord said, I must go with me. Huh? Who's with me? It's you. Listen, I saw something. Come here, follow me. The enemy, two times, two times at the age of marriage, two times. And then the man changed his mind a day before. After they've gathered, they even, oh my God. Just imagine, you put a tent, people gather, you are invited, your uncle says, I'm getting married tomorrow, and the man doesn't show up, he changes his mind. The devil is a liar. For our weapons of war, our weapons of war are not carnal, but they are mighty in pulling down of every stronghold. <laughs> you are looking at it, what about your own family? You gotta pray. Enough is enough. You gotta pray. Katabash. Rakapapapash. Rakasonda kataya. Lekomba kata. Somebody pray. Asha's help. Asha's help. The power is there. Yeshu. Your life will never be the same. by the word prayer and worship and I want us to go into a moment of deep worship so wherever you are make an altar you can come here to the front it's okay this front is sanctified with the fire just come in new and experience God and we're gonna get into the place where you encounter God yourself just come just come 
No one is going to bother you here. And we're going to flow. Yes, you. The Bible says 
I beseech thee, brethren, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is one of your significant acts of worship when you don't just offer your song but also offer your body as a sacrifice I invite you tonight to not just lay your song at the altar can you also surrender your body because Jesus did not just die for your song but he died for all of you as we worship can you lay your body at the altar as a sacrifice with lifted hands we With lifted hands We worship you With lifted hands We With lifted hands, with lifted hands, Lord, we worship, we worship <laughs> With lifted hands, with lifted hands, Lord, we worship, we I am indeed I am with all we have with all we Lord we worship we worship with all Yeah, on 
mistake if we end this night and you are sitting there somewhere and you do not know of this refuge that we sing about we would have made the biggest mistake if we sing about a God who you can run to and we let you leave without accepting him and experience the refuge we're talking about and experience the safety that we've been singing about. I would say a lot, but I want to speak directly to your soul tonight. Oh, you spirit, listen to me. You need Jesus. You need a hiding place. You need a refuge. Come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you know you need a Savior, if you know you need a refuge, You know you need a savior. If you know you need a refuge, we will not make the mistake of not giving you an opportunity to come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's nothing good outside of Jesus, everything is better in Jesus everything is good in Jesus I extend this invitation to you if you want to accept him into your life if you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior come forward tonight come forward tonight Jesus is calling your name Jesus is calling your name. Tonight is about you. Tonight is about you. Tonight is about you. Jesus is calling your name. You've been crying for too long. You've been going through things, asking yourself questions. And I'm here to tell you tonight that the answer is Jesus Christ. If you want to accept him into your life, come forward tonight. This moment is for you. All of this is for you. It would have been in vain if you do not accept Jesus tonight. And you leave this house without a savior. Jesus is calling your name. Come forward. This night is for you. I'm not going to shout it out. If you want to accept Jesus into your life, he is calling you tonight. 
He wants to be your savior. He wants to be your refuge. He wants to cover you. He wants to be the answer to all of the questions that you've been asking yourself. Wherever you are, Jesus is calling your name. Jesus is calling your name. Jesus is calling your name. This moment is for you. This moment is for you. Listen, this might be an awkward moment, but I'm very patient when it comes to this because it is not just a matter of life and death. It is a matter of eternal life and death. We're not just talking about your life this side. We're talking about your life in everlasting, in eternity, where you need to spend it with your Savior. Jesus is calling your name. All of this was just for you. All of this was just for you. Come forward. All of this was just for you. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. You are about to change your life. You are about to change your life. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. You are about to change your life. And not just your life. Your family's life. Not just your family's life, your children's life. Not just your children's life, your children's children's life. You are about to change the course of generations. understand how much the devil is being defeated right now you don't know how much of a victory this is you don't know how much of a victory this is the word of God says heaven rejoices at one life how many lives do we have in forward here one two three four five six seven Come on, come on, church. 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 You've made the best decision of your life. This is the last call. I don't want to leave you behind. If you are there and you're struggling with yourself. Come and accept Jesus. Listen, you have not experienced love until you experience God. You've not experienced love until you've experienced God. This is the last call. Come, come and accept Jesus in your life. I give you my word. I promise you, you will never be the same. 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 Listen. You that is standing forward and you are here. All of these lights and these screens and and the sound that is here. It was all for you. That today you can meet Jesus Christ and accept him and he comes into your life all of this would have been in vain if we didn't have new members in the family all of this would have been in vain 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stretch your hands towards them. If you are still there, maybe you are saying, I'm shy. My girlfriend is next to me. How can I go? Forget about your girlfriend. When you die, to be you alone in the coffin. And you be you and your maker. So wherever you are come, I, I feel like there are still more young people you need to make right with God today. Let's clap hands for them as they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. There's more. Upstairs, gallery, they are speaking to you. Come. Come. Just come. Forget about who's next to you. It's all about you and God. Amen. Stretch your hands towards them. Let's pray together. I want you to repeat this prayer. I said, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as the Lord and Savior of my life. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me and rose again on the third day that I might have life and life in abundance. As from today, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together for them. You can do better. You guys that are here, our team is waiting for you at the back. I want you to follow this lady there. That is just lift your hand feet. They're going to follow. Just follow her. Take your belongings and everything. Follow her. They're going to take your details. They're going to give you new Bibles, free daily devotions, help you to grow in the things of the Lord. Your life will never be the same. Let's clap hands for Jesus. Amen. You can do better than that. Somebody clap. You that are here, stay here. Stay in the presence. Where are you going? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Amen. Everybody stand. What an awesome time we had in the presence of God. Amen. Everybody stand. This is still holy ground. And I believe when you leave this place, you are going back home with that fire. 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 You shall see visions. You shall prophesy. You shall dream dreams. There will be divine visitation because of impact night. How many are saying Impact Night should come back to Porch again? How many are saying that? How many should say once more should come back to Porch again? I didn't hear your noise, guys. Still, they love you. Amen. So, special thanks to everybody that came tonight. I love and appreciate you. I see my family members are there. Thank you, guys. Love and appreciate you. And everyone, our team is there. Let's give a round of applause to our team that are wearing these t-shirts. They did an amazing job tonight. So let's give them a hand, please. Amen. So thank you, guys. Don't forget, if you're if you're on campus, we meet every Friday at B what? B what? B14. Every Friday, five o'clock. You just get there. It's, the presence of God is there every Friday. Holy day or no holy day, you just come there and experience God. Your life will never be the same. So tell somebody we are meeting Friday. B14. The party continues. Tell a neighbor the party continues. At B14. So if you don't know where B14 is, a big auditorium down there, church auditorium. They use it for exams and lectures. So every Friday we are there, five o'clock, just to encounter God. Your life will never be the same. So bring a friend that somebody came. Um, grab somebody stands next to you. Amen. Apostle Hales, come quickly. Come. Amen. Grab somebody stands. We're going to share grace. And I believe that when you're leaving this place, your life will never be the same again. Every head closed. Receive grace. And after that, once again, we dance a little bit. Can we go home rejoicing? Is that okay? Okay. Bow, bow your heads in prayer and receive grace. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. This is the day that you have made, O oh God. That you have called these sons and daughters, O oh Father. We thank you that you have brought us here. Keep every son, every daughter, O oh Father. Keep them, O oh Father, covered under the blood of your son, Yeshua. May they be the apple of your eye. Hide them, O oh Father, in the shadow of their wings. Whatever they put their hand to, 
let them prosper holy spirit that you would take complete and total control over their lives so oh god that everyone would be the head and not the tail that goodness and mercy will be their portion oh god all the days of their life in the mighty name of jesus we pray father amen amen let's give apostle a hand thank you sir okay now listen to this follow instructions uh we're gonna dance we are still here don't be in a rush okay i had they prepared something for you as you go there's a package waiting for you outside so don't be in a rush um all the pastors who are they following registration anna okay so please at the registration desk all the pastors let's meet there we also have a package for you your life will never be the same okay but after that fee is gonna come and give you more instructions but can we a little bit yeah can we just dance a little bit check your neighbor huh? can we do that can we do that check your neighbor don't be in a rush oh. please don't give them packages if they are leaving i want us to dance you guys that are here thank you for praying your life will never be the same but now you must rejoice that gift that you received okay once are you ready
One more, one more, then we're going home, right? Can, can, can we dance here so that the prophet sees that we danced and then we go home? Is that fine? Oh, Jehovah, F. Liminga! Oh, Jehovah, F. Liminga! I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was.
I am going to make. And one of them is that everyone that needs transport, please meet with me at the foyer so that we can arrange a larger chariot of fire to drop you at home. Um, we also have a store at the foyer that's, that's selling shirts and um, text uh, books, profits books. If you are interested, please go there. There's a table for that. And our last announcement is that we do have prayers every Friday on campus. And this is at B4 from 5 to 6. And that's all from me. I hope that you have a blessed night and that the angels of the Lord accompany you home. Amen.